भाऊ शुभेच्छा वाढदिवसाच्या Yeah, good morning to you all. Uh, when I, I request all other participants to unmute their, uh, uh, I mean, audio. Uh, thank you. So today I'll be uh, just talking about another multivariate uh, data analytics uh, technique. So that is called split analysis. So uh, this is uh, actually I'm not. Uh, I've retired from Prof. Uh, Department Studies. I forgot to change this particular slide. So I am from Bichpilani, Hyderabad. So as you all know that here. so that this is my uh, uh, previous uh, 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 sojourn and then i have done it uh, i was retired from uh, usman university and then from there uh, i just joined back uh, which will i'm here okay so anyhow uh, this is uh, another uh, technique uh, with which uh, uh, you can as well uh, discriminate between two groups like for example uh, you say that here uh, there are uh, two groups are there and then you want to know that here Uh, is there any misclassification of uh, one group over other and the uh, uh, other group over the first group so so this sort of a like uh, i mean uh, i mean as i told you that here i am uh, this is second time i am i am telling it i think here so i would like to know that here what is the uh, uh, difference between uh, the trump's speeches and as well as the biden's uh, speeches is there any uh, topics which are uh, exclusively uh, independent of each other so are they talking uh, uh, some sense or not can also be got by this particular uh, technique here yeah? so how much of uh, uh, misclassification is there how much of correct classification is there in terms of uh, the keywords which are used by the trump and biden so we have, we uh, we were working on that here yeah? so i mean we'll be just publishing that particular paper so uh, i mean uh, so so this for this type of uh, situations so uh, there uh, it is only speeches so that is called as a natural language processing nlp so uh, i mean we uh, i mean uh, i mean uh, so the, uh, you want to discriminate between these two who are uh, having the commonness and who are not having the commonness so having commonness is correctly uh, uh, they are talking about uh, those topics only those are uh, having some sort of a misclassification they are uh, getting a, a, a wrong classification so that means their uh, topics are independent of each other so that sort of a thing you can as well do that here so first i'll discuss about uh, the theoretical aspect of uh, this discriminant analysis so this is actually uh, found out by fisher r a fisher so r a fisher is the father of statistics world over and then he is a very well known figure and then our our, our own uh, uh, i mean uh, indian born uh, who is now 100 years that is uh, professor c r rao so i have done a uh um, a five day program uh, uh, with uh, professor cr rao and uh, his uh, uh, the students in usmania university so that was uh, five, i mean around 5 6 years back so uh, i mean uh, this man is the student of ra fisher and then he is well known and then he is uh, a living legend and who is now 100 years recently i just gave a lecture in cr rao's institute in university of hyderabad so that is actually a very good uh, 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 i mean um, Uh, i mean it is my uh, greatest thing that they have invited me so that is uh, really uh, worth uh, saying it that's the reason i am just explaining it that so that so this is uh, uh, the uh, things uh, uh, which we can as well do that here so i i theoretical aspect i'll do then uh, after finishing this here so then i just go to a case study and then how do i discriminate through spss so that i love uh, that i will explain it and then see that here how best we can as well understand uh, through the case study Right. so i i hope that here all participants might uh, definitely understand the case studies which i am explaining it here so that with that you can as well remember that here for this type of a data you can as well do this uh, statistical test so that is actually our uh, journey and me and hasan wanted that so we had a chat before starting this particular uh, this thing here so he requested me i said definitely so help the teachers the teacher so that is the context with which uh, we both uh, 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 thought about uh, these uh, analytics though i mean most of you may not be really knowing the, the statistical aspects so i have just started with the uh, 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 i mean fundamentals and then gone into the uh, more advanced levels of uh, uh, handling the uh, multivariate data so uh, i mean uh, this is uh, actually uh, uh, I, i i wanted to say that here so here aap bada So, 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 I mean, uh, when do you want this? Uh, 
I am muting them all, sir. Please unmute yourself. I have, I have to mute all. Professor, okay. I am unmuted. I am unmuted. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the I'll just discuss with uh, the concepts of uh, uh, discriminant analysis. So here, this uh, discriminant analysis is actually uh, taken. Um, uh, two group membership has to be take, uh, taken. Two or more. Uh, you can as well too. So if it is a two, it is Fisher's linear discriminant function. And then if it is more, uh, it will be a mul multiple discriminant uh, function. So MD, uh, uh, MDA, multiple discriminant analysis, MDA, it is called as. Otherwise, it is only two groups, it is LDA, right? So, I mean, uh, we can also, uh, wherever you see the data, so there will be a misconception that here you will be uh, using a, a MANOVA. So that is called as multivariate analysis of variance. So, uh, I mean, uh, this is where you have a number of groups and then you want to know the significance of these groups in the uh, analysis. So that is being, uh, uh, I mean, you want to go for a, uh, whenever the data is uh, representing a linear uh, context, so then you just go for MANOVA. But MANOVA is uh, a wrong uh, uh, tool which you use whenever you have a, uh, to predict the group membership. Right? So, uh, so, so, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, so continuing this, uh, the concepts here. So, how, how, a, how can a continuous variable be linearly combined to best classify a subject into a group? So, that means that actually exclusively this technique also you will be using only the quantitative data. So, that is, it is actually a measurement data. So, that is heights, weights, circumference, head circumference, or cholesterol level, BP levels. Etc. Etc. So you can as well uh, use that particular data. Uh, I mean, uh, you must be wondering that here. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you are telling that here it is quantitative data, but you have used in discriminating between the the speeches of Biden and as well as uh, uh, I mean uh, Trump. Yes. So that is actually a string variable where the string variable is being converted into the number of words used, and that number is once again a quantitative variable, continuous uh, the string n. So for that we have used it. Right. So, so, so that is how uh, you want to do that here, and you want to separate two mixed groups into a separate groups, one group uh, belonging to this, and then how much of a, a group two has fallen into group one, and how much of group one has fallen into group two. So that sort of a separation is actually is needed here. So, so I um, mean, slightly different uh, is that actually you have to classify. Classification has to be done here. So when we uh, uh, seek uh, rules that allocate new subjects into established classes. So, so how many are one, uh, uh, I mean, uh, class one to class one, how many are class one to class two, how many are class two to class two, and how many are class two to class one. So this class one to class two, class two to class one is called as the misclassification, right? So this is, uh, uh, I mean, the other uh, thing which I have uh, discussed on the second day. So that is the logistic regression. So he is one of the competitor for this particular thing. So, but uh, there uh, it is not uh, uh, really the same sort of a, this thing you get it here. In logistic regression, you don't get a classification. So that's the reason whenever you want to have a separate the groups, quantitative groups, and then uh, classify the uh, uh, I mean, uh, misclassification, correct classification. So we just go for a uh, I mean, uh, uh, linear discriminant function. So here there are two populations, pi1 and pi2. So that is there are two groups. Pi1 is one group, pi2 is another group. So we have measurements which are multivariate. So it's a p-variate vector. So each one of uh, each one of the respondent will have so many p uh, uh, variables will be there. So like that, if I just take it 50 respondents, so I have uh, uh, 50 rows by uh, uh, I mean p columns. That much of uh, a data will be with me. So then uh, on each each of the individual concern. So now uh, what is that actually with this particular 50 by P uh, matrix of data, uh, I mean, I want to take another new value under this particular same context. So I want to classify this, whether it is uh, uh, this X, new X, is it belonging to this particular group or this particular group, right? Or uh, I mean, uh, uh, so that 
correct classification I want to do. So for that, I just construct a, a Fisher's linear discriminant function for these two groups and then classify this X, new X, into this particular group. Right? So that is uh, what actually, so because initially just by seeing the data, you cannot uh, definitely know that here whether it is belonging to this or this. So that's the reason I'm just uh, do a scientific classification and that scientific classification is nothing but uh, a, a linear discriminant function and this is being developed by Fisher. Right? So this is what actually you have. So what are the assumptions of this? Uh, pi 1 should be normal in nature. Pi 2 should also be normal in nature. In any, in, in any data sciences problem, the data which you consider has to be normally distributed. If it is not normally distributed, you have to convert this into standard normal. So the standard normal conversion is, uh, you, you, as everyone knows that here, those who have a little knowledge of uh, statistics, you know that here it is Z equals to X minus mu by sigma, where X is your non-normal uh, variable. So that is one of these X1. Then mu is a mean of that particular X1 and a sigma is a standard deviation of that particular X1. So if I just, uh, for each observation, so that is X minus mu, X minus means what actually X is that variable value, single observation minus average of that value divided by sigma. So then that, that is called as the standard normal. So if I just take it for these, now uh, it won't be X1, it will be Z1, Z1. So Z1 has another 50 observations. So 50 rows by one vector will be there. So now I, if I just take it the mean of these Z, uh, Z1, so then it will be mean is zero and one is standard uh, uh, one is standard deviation. So now I can I, I don't analyze X1, but I analyze Z1. So that is the main concern under non-normality situation, right? So, I mean, you just can't say that here it is not normal and then throw away the data, no. So there are many ways, when many scientific correct ways with which you can handle the data, right? So now, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, so that is what actually the, uh, uh, you want to classify a new variable uh, for an unknown individual. So whether it is belonging to unknown individual means what actually, whether it is belonging to pi one or pi two. So that can be classified and then known that here, it belongs to this new unknown vector is belonging to pi one or pi two, right? So, so that, is the, that is the context with which you want to go for the classification. So, so this is the context. So I said that this is normal. So this is little more peaked, but it is normal. And this is little flatter, right? But for both of them, the mean median mode is equal. So this is the point. Mean equals to median equals to mode. And that, that, that is what actually uh, you, you, you have here, right? So, so that is how uh, you, you uh, get these things done here. So this is the density of uh, one normal. And this is another uh, density of another normal. So this is actually a bivariate normal. So what is this here? The tail of uh, tail of this R1 is in, in, in the area of uh, R2. And the tail of R2 is in the area of R1, right? So all mathematics uh, uh, teachers here, they must have already grasped. So how do I get the area covered under R1 and R2? So R1's area is this and R2 areas is this. So you can unmute, unmute and then do that here. How do I get this particular area covered here? It's a mathematical, uh, uh, this thing. How do I do that here? Can anyone answer? You can unmute and answer, any one of you. Yeah, Mudassir Bhatt, I will answer uh, in the last year question, PCA. You have asked, I will answer, uh, Mudassir. I will definitely answer after the class. Yeah. Today only I'll just finish after the class. Yeah. So you can unmute and then sell. Uh, how, how do I get this uh, probability of misclassifying population two member in population one and population one member in population two? So this is uh, uh, this area I wanted to get. So this is this is the area. So how do I get it? Anyone? <laughs> 